games are great, of course, but starting your own collection away from a board game cafe can get a little pricey. Once you start adding up big boxes of miniatures and metal pieces, the numbers start rising. But you don't have to spend a ton to start filling your shelves with fun games. There are great party games, two-player experiences, dexterity games, and more, all for under £20 or under $25. So, I'm Maddie from Dice Breaker, and these are 15 budget board games to add to your shelf. Skull is quite possibly the cheapest game of all on this list, as it was originally played with scrawled on beer mats. First invented as an old biker gang ritual, or so the legend goes, Skull is a bluffing game for three to six players. At the start of the game, each player is dealt out a stack of four identical square cards bearing their player color and symbol. Three of those cards are printed with pretty flowers, and one is printed with a menacing skull. Gameplay is split into two phases, placing down cards or making a bet. For example, I reckon I can flip two cards over and not draw a skull. From there, you either raise the bid or call someone's bluff. If you manage your bet, then congrats, you're halfway to victory. Reveal a skull at any point though, and you'll lose one of your cards randomly for the rest of the game. Lose four and you're out. Succeed twice though, and you win. Skull's a simple game with loads of drama and theatre perfect for trips to the pub. Biker jackets are not required to play, but are definitely encouraged. If you're someone who likes fireworks, you've probably always wondered what it would be like to create your own dazzling display. Well, wonder no more, as Hanabi is your chance to do just that. Players work together to place suited and numbered cards in the correct order to create the best display. It sounds simple enough, but rather than selecting from your own hand, you have to hold the cards backwards, meaning everyone else had to give you clues on what you hold and what you should play. Players are limited to either describing the suit or the number, and only have so many clues they can do each time. It's a pleasantly head-scratching logic puzzle as you work out which cards to play, and removes a major obstacle common in a lot of cooperative board games of one player taking over the decision making. True teamwork is needed if you're going to pull off a spectacular display. So now you can add explosives experts to your CV. Well, if you succeed. Rhino Hero is a fun dexterity game that's basically reverse Jenga. The aim of the game is to craft a towering building for the courageous super rhino to scale and defend. Each person has five roof tiles in their hand and must successfully place them all, constructing the tower to win. However, each one has new rules on where to place the walls that go in between, making it harder and harder to keep your building sturdy, or they force you to move Super Rhino further up the floors, meaning you might send the tower toppling to the ground and leaving the hero not quite so heroic. Unless, of course, it was a demolition job, in which case he's done great. The rules are simple, meaning it's easy to get anyone involved, and once you've got to grips with it, you can pull it out for a quick playthrough on any game night, whenever you want something fun and light to fill the time. So ditch the Jenga set and embrace the Rhino. not in the know, Point Salad is not only a game, but an unofficial genre. Games in which loads of different scoring conditions are available, and it's up to you to try and wrangle as many points as possible before the game ends. Well, Point Salad the card game takes that concept as literally as you can, with players drafting vegetables into their play areas and using them to score different conditions. At the center of the table lies a shop of tasty vegetables randomly filled from piles on the end of each row. On the back of every vegetable card, however, is a different scoring condition that you can also pull into your play area, giving new ways to score all of your vegetables. 
Point Salad is beautifully simplistic and the turns absolutely whiz past as players get more and more cards in front of them until the game ends and you get to count up your massive pile of points and presumably eat your delicious salad. This compact little roll and write has quickly become one of my favorite games. It's quick, it's simple, and the ever-changing dice rolls means it's always different. Railroad Inc. tasks you with organizing transport links across your board. The trick is, you have to use the symbols on the dice to do so. It quickly becomes a risky puzzle where you leave gaps hoping for the right symbol to appear on the dice, while also working with what you have to score the most points. The base game plays from one to six players, so it's incredibly flexible depending on what kind of game day you're having. But if you grab more boxes, you can push the player count up even higher. The box is the limit. And once you start playing, you'll really want to pick up extra boxes. Railroad Inc. has a ton of simple and game-changing expansions that add new dice to your ever-changing transportation routes. From lakes and rivers to factories or even eldritch tentacles. Oh, yeah, if you thought getting train A to station B was hard, wait till Cthulhu gets involved. The Crew The Quest for Planet Nine is a fantastic card game. A trick-caking co-op game at its core, players lay down cards of the same suit with the highest number on them winning the round. The crew translates the vastness of outer space into a short little game that tests players' attention spans. Each game of the crew revolves around players working together to complete a set of objectives, which can be as simple as having the last round be won by a card of a certain suit, to much more complex requirements, such as playing each round of each suit in a particular order. However, players cannot communicate what they have to the others, so need to watch what other people play and remember what their objectives are. Fun, simple, and a little tricksy, get ready to explore outer space in this quirky co-op card game. Domino is a game that does basically what the title says. You're selecting domino-like tiles to expand your kingdom, better than the other lords can. Two to four players start with a castle and must pick from a selection of land tiles to start their growing domain. But like dominoes can only connect to matching pieces. The aim of the game isn't to have the largest kingdom, however. Instead, you're keeping an eye out on the crown symbols that score you points at the end of the game. The rules are super simple, making it a great family game that's easily replayable as you try to plan your way to the most points each time. And you can expand your kingdom even further with the fun Giants expansion to add an extra challenge, or the Dragomino game which scales down the rules for even younger players, and there's even Queen Domino for some added complexity if you want to play with some adult friends. Although the last title just pushes over budget, so if you're keeping conscious of your castle treasury, the original is a great starting place. So if you're looking to upgrade your old domino set with something bright, fun, and thematic, then King Domino is always waiting. A series all about creepy crawlies and silly card play, Cheating Moth is by far the most chaotic of the bunch. A game that not only encourages players to cheat, but downright forces you two to win the game. It plays a lot like Uno, with players having to place a card on a central stack that equals the value of the one below it, or a unit up or down from their hand, with those that can't force to draw another card. You win the game by emptying your hand of cards before anyone else, but each card you play has a chance to trigger a special rule. Ants will force the other players to draw more cards, but the titular cheating moth can only be played by cheating. Throw it behind you when no one is looking, drop it down the side of the sofa, anything to get it gone. And at the end of your game, you can enjoy looking around your room at all the secret cards scattered about and have a good laugh. Thank you. 
when it's raining outside and all you want to do is curl up inside all cozy like, there's nothing better than an intimate board gaming session. Days like this call for patchwork, a board game for two players using the various trimmings you've acquired over the years. You must piece together a quilt, making sure to utilize as much space as possible, and obviously scoring as many points as you can. Your aim is to cover as much as your board as possible, selecting quilt pieces by purchasing them with buttons. Because, of course, this is an adorable game. How else would you pay? You'll eventually get into a rhythm of choosing and placing quilt pieces onto your board, maximizing all of the space you have, and being sure to pick up good buttons along the way. For a challenging and yet undeniably relaxing two-player board game, why not get wrapped up in a little patchwork? A fake artist goes to New York, takes the imposter hunting formula and spices things up with a splash of Pictionary, resulting in an easy to learn game of deception that's more family friendly than most. Players take it in turns to add to a piece of art, gradually building up a picture of a secret answer pen stroke by pen stroke. The catch is that one of them must play along, but has no idea what they're supposed to be drawing. The visual element of the game encourages players to think outside of the box and creates extra space for ridiculous misunderstandings. It's also one of the only drawing games where being bad at art is a clear advantage. You can get away with scrolling a random misshapen blob and throwing up your hands with a, well, what did you expect? If you love Machi Koro but want a scaled down budget version, then let me introduce you to Happy City. This delightful little city builder sees you appointed mayor of a town and must fill it with things to attract residents, make them happy, and of course, earn yourself a little bit of extra money. Because without cash in the bank, you'll struggle to get the brand new sweet factory that you so desperately want. The artwork is adorable and whimsical, full of things like cat cafes, theme parks, and haunted mansions. Look, sometimes a city is best when you have a few ghosts hanging around too, apparently. It's a great family option with two game modes to scale how much complexity you want each playthrough. Although Board Game Geek suggests their age as 10 plus, it could easily be picked up by kids younger than that, so don't let the rating put you off. Happy City has a quick runtime, meaning it's the perfect thing to get to the table if you want a quick dose of, well, happiness. Hive is a simple and speedy abstract board game requiring absolutely no setup, able to be played on any flat surface, so ideal as a travel option too. Playing is straightforward enough, with each player choosing whether to be white or black before they take turns laying down tiles displaying various beautiful bugs, from the noble beetle to the delicate spider. Like abstract strategy games such as chess, the aim of Hive may be simple successfully surround your opponent's queen bee with tiles before they surround yours. But it's not necessarily easy, as serious strategy is likely required to outwit your competitor. You'll have to be careful of where you place what tiles and get inside your partner's head to anticipate their next move. Once you've gotten through one session of Hive, you'll undoubtedly want to move on to the next. Before you know it, you'll be 30 games deep while someone spontaneously purchases a colony of bees and an entire ant farm. This simple card game was a surprise hit for us at board game convention Essence Spiel last year, but our editor Matt has certainly sold Sea Salt and Paper as a game to watch. Each type of card scores you points differently, but mostly comes down to creating matching sets of the nautical theming. For example, pairs of crabs or sets of sharks and swimmers, an unfortunate but profitable pairing, and runs of shells, penguins, and sailors. The most interesting mechanic though comes when a player calls Last Chance. This is a risk reward bet where you claim to have the most points. The rest of the table gets one more round to try and best your score before everyone adds up. 
If you're right, you get bonus points on your runs and sets, but if someone beats you, you only scored the colour points on cards, not the normal kind, whereas everyone else at the table gets to add up like normal. It's an exciting interactive twist that encourages going for broke in an otherwise simple card game. So if you want beautiful paper craft creation, this could be the game for you. If you want a card game that everyone will enjoy, then you've got to pick up Six Nymphed. This deceptively simple card game has become a staple at the Dicebreaker office. There are 104 numbered cards, each with a certain amount of full heads on them. Each turn, you play a card above the value of the card before it on one of four rows. So if a row starts with 20, I could place 21, 45, or if I'm being really annoying, 80 or 100. Whoever places the last card in a row has to take all of the cards and count up the full heads. The winner is the person with the least amount of points in the end. It can play with two to 10 players, so a perfect party game that has a little more thinking to it. Plus, once you start, you will definitely become addicted. We spent the entirety of our weekend at Essen last year cracking six nymphs out at any given opportunity, and to this day, if you ask someone on the team if they'd want a game, I can guarantee it would be an enthusiastic yes. So those were 15 of the best budget board games that you can pick up for under £20 or $25. Which games do you recommend that don't break the bank? Let us know in the comments below. And while you're there, don't forget to give this video a like if you enjoyed. And make sure to subscribe to Dicebreaker for more videos on all things tabletop. You can also head over to dicebreaker.com, our website that posts daily news, reviews, and updates on all of the world of board games and beyond. And while you're there, you can also check out dicebreaker.com forward slash subscribe to become a member, where you get discounts to big events like PAX and Comic-Con, you get monthly free adventures and maps and more, and if you become a member for a full year, you get a free board game, a straight up free board game. So head on over there, and until the next time, I hope you have a lovely day.